Good morning, everybody. This is Damon Pond, the Bond Realty Group, licensed real estate broker in the states of Connecticut and New York. Hope everybody is doing well. Today is Wednesday, March 4th, 2020. Um, if you have any questions, you always email me at dbond011 at gmail.com. Or you can give me a call or text, 203-394-8123. Uh, welcome to Real Talk, everybody, where we talk about real estate issues uh, that, um, you know, can possibly affect someone you know and love or you yourself personally. Alrighty, so today's topic, I want to um, I want to talk about how, um, how we can establish black communities through real estate. All right, how can we? How can one develop black communities through real estate? Now, I know uh, some of you uh, were saying, uh, "Well, we mean black communities uh, uh, through real estate." We talking about? Uh, I live in a black community, and I will say, no. On average, uh, the average black person does not live in a black community. The average black person, myself included, live in a black neighborhood. So what is the difference between black communities and black neighborhoods? Well, I can't take full credit for this. Uh, Dr. Claude Anderson uh, noted in his book, Poweronomics, uh, the difference between a black neighborhood and a black community. All right? A uh, black neighborhood is where you have a whole bunch of black folk living together. All right? Um, you know, they, uh, some of them are homeowners, some are renters, what have you. But they all live, in, they all live together, cluster together in a second. All right? What distinguishes that from black communities is the fact that in black neighborhoods, uh, the people there don't own or operate any businesses in that particular area, or there's very few, all right? Uh, in black neighborhoods, most of the people who own and operate businesses are non-black people, all right? Uh, these are your Asians, both South Asians and East Asians. Uh, these are your Hispanics, all right? Uh, these are your, um, you know, Arabs. These are, these are outsiders, so to speak, in, in that sense, where they don't live in a community, but they set up shop in the community, and black people patronize these people in your community, all right? And unfortunately, sometimes uh, people in these communities, uh, the business owners, operators, will sometimes treat black people with disrespect, unfortunately. For example, many of the um, uh, health care um, uh, uh, store, not health care, excuse me, hair care stores, all right, which a lot of our black women use, uh, some of these uh, East Asians have been notorious for beating up, um, you know, a black women. All right. So a black community, on the other hand, is something different, way different. Black community is where not only do you have black people uh, living in the community, right, but also they own and operate the businesses within that community, within that community, which means that they can provide employment opportunities to that community, which means that they have both a personal and financial interest in that community. All right. So that is what I'm talking about here in terms of developing black communities through real estate. All right. Now, how do you do that? Well, first thing I said this before is typically we want to run out of our community or the so-called hood. We want to run out. All right. And while we are running out of our hood, many outsiders, OK, many non-black people are running into the hood. All right. So that liquor store that they own or that Chinese restaurant that they own or, you know, that bodega, they, the bodega that they own may not necessarily be the, um, you know, uh, uh, most impressive looking uh, piece of real estate. But it's real estate that they own and operate, all right? And that's something we lack. Uh, often at times, if we do have a business idea for real estate, we want to go into other communities and do this. Now, what's interesting is this. Many other people will not support black businesses, all right? Um, if you try to operate, own and operate in their other community. I'm not saying don't, you know, don't do that, don't give it a try. Obviously, it's America and, you know, suppose we have a right to do, you know, set up shop where we want to set up shop. But I'm just saying that's the over, over, overall effect. And what happens is this. A lot of times, other groups will drive sometimes 40, 50 miles um, to another locale in order to support that particular business, all right? This is very common for Indians or, um, or Asians, or, I mean, excuse me, Chinese or Koreans or whatnot. They will drive out the way to support another Korean, to support another Chinese. And that's something we just don't get. So I often heard the argument saying, well, you know, uh, black businesses, you know, I try to support black businesses, uh, but yet they um, will do X, Y, and Z, or then reliable. Well, here's the thing. We will go on our way to support people that downright will uh, harm us physically, all right? We don't mind giving our dollars to them, but yet we won't do that for our own, um, you know, uh, well-being, if you will. So that is what I'm talking about in terms of developing black communities through real estate, all right? It is vital for economic survival, all right? If we can't develop black communities through real estate, uh, then we will just continue being black neighborhoods. 
where we will consistently be exploited, all right, taken advantage of, marginalized, and all the other sociological terms and aspects, all right? So, like I said before, um, don't, you know, think twice, you know, before you want to run out the hood. Because what eventually what happens is, and there's consistent examples of this, right? You know, I look at South Norwalk, Connecticut. South Norwalk is gentrifying completely, right? There's a new mall there called the Sono Collection. Uh, they have high-end shops, Nordstrom's, Bloomingdale's, so forth and so on, all right? And that is obviously appealing to a certain class of people. Um, the black folks who used to live there, all right, uh, have been pushed out of South Norwalk. So, you know, back in the days, you know, when it was the hood, all right, uh, nobody would touch it. But now that other groups have seen value in what black folks, well, we didn't have it because we didn't own real estate. Some of us did, but not all of us. Um, what happens is we see them being pushed out. I'm saying is stop being pushed out, all right, invest in your hood. I did a video piece on that before. Invest in your hood. All right, because we as black folks usually don't want to invest in our hood until other groups, particularly white groups, want to invest in the hood. Then all of a sudden we see value in investing in the hood. So that's how we certainly can start off um, it. It's not easy, okay? It can be hard, but it's something that should be done and needs to be done. So I encourage you to share this with uh, anybody you know, okay? Like it on Facebook, like it on uh, YouTube, and so forth. And thank you for tuning in to Real Talk. This is Damon Bond, licensed real estate broker in the states of Connecticut and New York, representing Bond Realty Group. Uh, if you have any questions, you always please you know, call me, 203-394-8123. Or you can always um, you know, email me, dbond011 at gmail.com. I'll say that again for you, dbond011 at gmail.com. So please, have a wonderful day. Uh, be well. Um, stay warm. And if you're in the Midwest and Tennessee, please try to be safe. I hope everybody is doing okay down in that area. Have a good day.